So here's what I want to know from you. So in our in our article on uh, predictions for, for yeah. 2019, mm -hmm. right, and the, for the eLearning Guild, one of the things we hit on was machine learning and, and artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean for the, um, the future <laughs> workforce? Yeah. And I know that you have opinions about robots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But I really, I want to tell me more what, what when we kind of start thinking about automation mm -hmm. and um, artificial intelligence and being able to do tasks with machines that used to um, require people to mm -hmm. do them. What's your, you know, futuristic kind of take on that? What does the future look like? Well, I think <laughs> there's two things. One would be, because, I mean, the folks that are working in the LD department are also part of the workforce. So two, two things are happening. The work that we are producing is going to change, mm -hmm. and the way we're producing it is going to change, because it's going to affect both of us. Mm -hmm. I honestly see a, a good future. I mean, I know you got the, is it going to be Terminator, or is it going to be Jetsons, mm -hmm. right? Um, I... I feel like it's gonna be Jetsons. Yeah, you're 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 the optimist, right? I'm, I am. I'm scared of the robots. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm genuinely afraid of what is gonna happen as as a result from all of this. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess my my, my way of thinking of all of this is, I mean, you 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 hear me say this all the time: the hurry up and and fail fast. Mm -hmm. um, and a good example I heard was, you know, we we didn't sit around. To try to imagine what a world will be if we needed stop signs and traffic lights and speed limits and who's going to enforce that and are we going to have the enforcers in this automobile? I mean, we just we just created the automobile, right, right, and then we responsibly figured it out as we went, right, and we realized we needed all these other things. Yeah, I think uh, it. <coughs> that's kind of how I see it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, <laughs> this is weird. My <laughs> My peace of mind comes that it's gonna we're gonna have the help of the robots mm -hmm. to figure out how to handle the robots. Honestly, and that's you know when I try to be more optimistic about it because see I look at you know and we both obviously will have talking about history uh -huh. right and I, you know the biggest argument that I hear for it's gonna be okay is that throughout history as we've gone from one machine age to another. Uh, jobs were displaced, mm -hmm. um, but they were replaced by new jobs okay. doing new things. Mm -hmm. And so in the end, just the nature of the work changed, but yeah. it, there was still work. And because history says that's what happens, then that's what's going to happen here too. Mm -hmm. And I, I get that, I buy into that to a certain degree, but I, I don't know how much of what the world we live in today is really uh, can really look to history. It's just so different. I, and I'll tell you this, there's one thing <clears throat> that I think is different. Um, and throughout history, we have been, it's been the human creating these technologies. Um, I think for the first time, it's, it's no longer human minds, mm -hmm. right? Um, let me see if I can kind of expresses as, as, as best as I can. The way I, I, this example I use all the time, right, it's think of, uh, think of a mind as muscle, mm -hmm. okay? So forever, muscle was what created things. How, how much can you pick up, right? How much, how, how hard can you hit this mm -hmm. object? Uh, and what we started creating was machine muscle, mm -hmm. where this machine will pick up this rock. This machine would make the hole. Yeah. Um, but it was still humans creating that. Now we're going into minds. It's machine minds, right? So it's no longer a brain programming a computer. It's a computer programming a computer. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think the the difference in that it's it's, it's gonna be felt. We haven't done that before. We haven't been there before. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I guess that, that is one of the scary things. It's unknown. Mm -hmm. It really is unknown. Uh, but again, I mean, I'm just the optimist that I, I feel like, yeah. you know, we are going to be 
too entangled with machines at first mm -hmm. that it's, it's going to evolve mixed. Yeah. It's not going to be a clear cut of like, okay, now the machine took over. And I think that's um, um, at DevLearn, we heard um, Dr. Ayanna Howard talk about <clears throat> her kind of take on robotics, and mm -hmm. she's been kind of a pioneer in that area. And the way she put it, I think, kind of resonated with me. It's just like, it's not people or robots. Uh -huh. It's people and robots. Mm -hmm. And that there's, the, the optimal is where we find ways to work together mm -hmm. and do the things that we're each best at. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a different, <clears throat> it's a less, a, less a pop, a pop, apocalyptic uh, perspective. Yeah. Um, but to bring this back to, to learning so that we're not just now starting to talk about <laughs> like, you know, the end of the world and that kind of stuff. Because really what it comes down to is we're going to need to reskill this workforce, yeah. right? Like you said. Mm -hmm. um, in potentially a pretty dramatic way. Mm -hmm. um, so what are those skills yeah, that, that are going to be point. needed mm -hmm. to work in harmony with the artificial intelligence that will undoubtedly improve the quality of life mm -hmm. and efficiency and, and all of those things. But if it doesn't fully displace those jobs, then what are those new skills and how do we figure out what those are and then start moving down that direction? This is going to happen much faster than I think a lot of people realize. Yeah. Um, mm. I guess one of the things that um, I like about that is, you know, I've I've talked to some. We we've met people who, <laughs> who have a more pessimistic way of looking at not just the future but technology. How mm -hmm. you know, phones are ruining our relationships, and I don't disagree with that. Obviously, I think yeah, we've we've suffered from some of those things. Um, but I, I what I've noticed what what has attracted me is, but yeah, why why is it that affects us though? Why is it that relationships are different now? And it's weird because we become so entangled with technology that we're becoming more human, or at least we, we're becoming more, we gotta pay attention more to humans. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is, perfect example, you know, why, why is it that you know, we're, we're always on our phones? Well, it's it's hard to understand that if if you if you don't really go into the science of it, mm -hmm. and if you just think well because it's just it's just cool it's fun to mm -hmm. comment on people's posts that's not it, it's the way the brain works and you start to understand human human beings again, mm -hmm. uh, and and I think it, it's kind of a little bit of what I think should happen, where when we re reskilling the the workforce, <coughs> what skills do they need? Uh, I think they become a little more human now, mm -hmm. where some of the repetitive things are being taken care of yeah. by the machines. And so what is it that humans need to do? Mm -hmm. They need to be humans. This is bad again. news if you're an introvert, right? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, the, 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 the job that allowed me to just kind of go sit, sit in my over corner, there and well, do my almost thing. by definition, that's the type of job that a, that a, yeah. a, a robot could uh, replace. Yes. <laughs> so our phones are like they're the 21st century cigarette. They're they're that level of addicting. They're built to be addicting. Yeah. As we've learned mm -hmm. a lot, um, and they can be you know pretty destructive if we aren't careful about mm -hmm. it. But, <clears throat> but I also I again at the same time I look at all the good things that come from it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah, it's just why. Why sometimes I feel like no, it's it's okay, you know. And yeah, I agree. It's the social element of it uh -huh. that is the thing mm -hmm. that you now have to just be much more intentional about mm -hmm. and deliberate about, because it is easy to live in here. And you obviously can be social in here, mm -hmm. but it's well, such <laughs> a different thing than like us sitting across the table from each other, talking yeah. to each other. There's some skill that goes along <laughs> with that that yeah. you learn through experience, mm -hmm. right? Well, let's go in a little bit about like some of the things that we, we mentioned uh, on this article that the eLearning Guild mm -hmm. um, you know, gave us the opportunity to participate. And just real quick, I just want to, I mean, this is not sponsored by the eLearning Guild or anything, <laughs> but, uh, coming but thank from, you. Yeah, well, and, and also coming from a background of, you know, I did video graphics and I, and, and I got plunged into the world of learning mm -hmm. and I loved it. Uh, and my first experiences, you know, in 
and listening to some of the experts and everything was with the e-learning guild uh, when we started going to some of these conferences. And I just, you know, I really recommend it. I, I honestly mm-hmm. do. Again, you know, this is this is not sponsored or anything, but it's just it's been a great experience. I think they do a great conference, yeah. and um, you know, they I feel welcome there. You know, mm-hmm. that that kind of thing. You know, I didn't feel like an outsider coming in with you know to a, a group of well learning people. Uh, like, who are you? Yeah, video yeah. Video editor. <laughs> you don't belong here. Yeah, like oh, you don't have credentials. You don't. Yeah. You don't. You don't. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, even when when I had the. Uh, you know, privilege to even speak at some of these mm-hmm. conferences. Even when it, when it came from a, from I was speaking regarding my expertise of um, graphic design and things like that. It mm-hmm. was still you know it's a great experience because then I get to combine those exp- uh, those expertise with, you know, the folks that know a lot about learning and know about uh, the yeah. learning department. Is well, and I think that that's a lot of that is it, it, it's where the industry is and how much it's transforming mm-hmm. because. You do go to you go to a conference and there are sessions on video production yeah. and video mm-hmm. editorial on graphic design on user uh, interfaces. I would love to go back and look and see if I could dig up an agenda <laughs> from uh, you know what the session list looked like in 2005 and just kind of com- you know what were the topics mm-hmm. that were being discussed. <laughs> Yeah. And, and maybe, hey, maybe it was much more forward thinking than I think, but mm-hmm. I, I know what my imagination tells me that it, it probably was yeah. compared to <clears throat> all of these new technologies and disciplines kind of converging in mm-hmm. the field because of what we're realizing, both from an innovation standpoint, but uh, as you said, kind of the, the brain science and our evolving knowledge of what the brain does and doesn't do or how it's you know it, it's influenced has brought a lot of these other disciplines into the mix no and I mean and obviously <laughs> I, again coming in from from that background I I was I was very young and I was I was starting to learn about editing and about filming where things started changing mm-hmm. as I was learning about those things um, you know I was I was gonna go do films and and that was my thing but you know uh, when I started going into that world you know, everyone was telling me how that is changing. And pretty soon, you're going to be able to edit just on a laptop. You won't need the <laughs> hardware. And, yeah. you know, and all these things were like, you know, think about it's going to be accessible for everybody. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's, let's, let's talk about, you know, the first thing that we kind of mentioned here is um, augmented reality. Mm-hmm. We believe <coughs> in augmented reality. Um, and, I mean, it, it's... It's been happening, but mm-hmm. you know, you, you you have a feeling that 2019. I is just think that um, you know, I have a great interest in, in virtual reality too, mm-hmm. and, and the the potential that it has. I think what <clears throat> the way I I think the way I've kind of come to look at it is at least from a learning perspective, and we're all still learning about the impacts of those technologies. Is that virtual reality is I, I think really well suited for certain things Mm -hmm. in in terms of that sort of learning for the first time. Um, You know, a a way to learn something new in a a really immersive way if you're really focused on sort of retention. You Mm -hmm. want to stick because it's so immersive it sticks. Augmented reality, I think, is really well suited to performance support or or workflow learning, right? Especially for those that are um, in sort of field in sort of field jobs, Uh right, who are out on mobile and on the road, who then have the ability to, you know, use a smartphone to create a a support overlay over a real object that they're looking at, whether that's um, the steps to operate a a specific set of equipment or a troubleshooting guide or something like that, Mm -hmm. that has a very practical application um, in, in, on the job. And I think that with what we're starting to see in terms of applications being released on our phones and those types of things, I just think the accessibility is there. Mm-hmm. I think it's easier probably to shift to, to an AR uh, approach um, than it is to, to a, a virtual uh, reality mm-hmm. approach. Not that that won't be very far behind, but. We've, uh, mm-hmm. we've had conversations about you know, the way we live is is it guiding is it dictating I and mean, it's it's kind of giving us a hint about the way we want to learn mm-hmm. or you know or the way 
we want to be at work, you know, and, and something like what you just described, uh, I can also see it on, in my everyday life. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when we adapt, we adopt there, uh, we kind of start seeing the potential for that kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. in, in, in our, when we drive, what do we, what do we, what do we get out? We get our phones mm -hmm. and you say, what's the address? And uh, when we put it there and... Yeah. Well, and I think that's a big part of it, right? Is that that technology, I think, will evolve faster because it is more accessible, mm -hmm. you know? And that's where it's going to come from. It's not, people <laughs> are not out there trying to, unfortunately, they're not yeah. trying to innovate to say, how can I create the newest learning tool? They're out there, like, how can I create the next, you know, mm -hmm. addicting game or whatever <laughs> yeah. so I can make a bunch of money on it? And then, a bit, but what that means is that's that's where the innovation yeah. and, and fast innovation comes. Let's just take advantage of that, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and to that end, not to leave that point, yeah, yeah. I, my, my feeling on this is just based on experience and some of the things that I've seen is that we will start seeing AR used in quote unquote learning. And the reason I say quote unquote is I don't think it's gonna originate from L&D departments. Okay. I think it's uh, you know, supply chain and operations business units are gonna be the ones that initially start to really drive the adoption of it. They probably won't even call it learning, they won't call <laughs> it performance support. It's just gonna be a new tool that's gonna help them with efficiency. Mm -hmm. Um, even though we would look at it as performance support. I say that to say I hope that I'm wrong. I hope it's L&D departments that see this opportunity and kind of take the lead and push it and drive it in their mm -hmm. organization. Um, but my gut tells me because of budgets and those types of things that it's going to come from other business units. So how can L&D sort of become a part of that, mm -hmm. you know, a, a solution? Do you feel like... You know, the folks you talk to or, you know, whenever we have the opportunity to work with a client, you feel like some of the challenges are just budget? Or you think is a mindset? Or you think is a... I think it's a... You think they're scared? Is, making there's, a mistake? I mean, but it's a little bit of a chicken, chicken and egg, egg thing, right? Because I do think it's, it's mindset in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. um, and then that mindset it's a sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy, which then basically leads to, you know, not getting a very big budget. Yeah. So if you view yourself as um, a cost center or a support function, mm -hmm. and say that's, you know, really what we're here to do is, um, you know, support leadership and in their initiatives. And uh, when somebody else innovates something and creates something, then we'll create learning around yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, that's that that's that's fine. Mm -hmm. I think that they can be, we can be much more than that, mm -hmm. right? I think if we continue to push ourselves into, we are understanding, you know, the way the brain works, mm -hmm. how people learn, what they need to know, and what they need to have in their good, yeah. <laughs> uh, long term memory and they're transferred into their hippocampus versus what they need to just be able to acquire, mm -hmm. then we can have a really unique point of view of human performance and how to optimize their performance in the job. And if that's not the most central thing to how a business functions and operates and profits, mm -hmm. then, then, then what is there? <laughs> yeah. So I, I just, I feel like there's a much stronger case for an L and a, a rebranded sort of L&D function to be a leader mm -hmm. in an organization as opposed to just a support function. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> you just, you just triggered me by saying, <laughs> uh, you know, the, um, Knowledge retention versus knowledge acquisition. Mm -hmm. I'm right? going to acquire something, and I think that honestly that that's something that w we as a society are struggling even from uh, school. You mm -hmm. know, uh, for the way the school works, um, I think you know when it comes to like tests and things like that, they're testing you on how good you are at taking a test. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. don't think it's much about like do you know <laughs> the, the the concept or even you know. Uh, did you memorize it? But right. what's the point of what's the point of that? Right. You know, is it learning, memorizing? 
and, and I have strong, I ha also have strong opinions about that. We were just talking earlier about, uh, you know, the video of the kid who's doing math. Mm -hmm. He's doing his math homework, and he's saying, Alexa, what's seven times five? <laughs> and Alexa's giving him the answer, and he's writing yeah. it. And so the question is, you know, is he, is he cheating? Mm -hmm. Is he just being smart? Is he taking advantage of technology? I mean, what, 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 what do we say about that? Yeah. Um, my dad told me once, I, I used to struggle with math. Mm -hmm. He told me, you know, look at it as working out. You know, um, yeah, you're not... <laughs> You're not gonna find yourself in a situation where you bought 20 apples and you know you have seven friends and you want to give you know it's like that's that's not the point of that. Mm -hmm. It's not the point to prepare you for a situation at you know in the workforce or anything. It's really to expand your mind and to be able to um, exercise your brain a little bit. And yeah. I, and and I appreciated that and I like that. Yeah. So when it came to like learning the multiplications and the divisions, I I, I felt like I was just exercising my right. mind. And, and that was okay. Um, but I, I honestly feel like <laughs> if, you know, if, if I get a phone call from the school telling me that, you know, my, uh, my son is just kind of asking, why can't, I just, why can't I just pull up this video? <coughs> you know, why can't I just pull up my notes yeah. in order to, 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 it's to a, give it's us a, a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, cultural <laughs> mindset and I had to reduce it to be I, the, the, the way I think about it is sort of like this backlash against cursive right <laughs> that, you know, I mean like you'll hear people okay. that are like well, they're not even teaching my kid how to my kid can't even write right, in cursive uh -huh. anymore and I'm like okay <laughs> so what uh -huh. you know yeah. can they write can they read uh -huh. and, and can they type I mean it's, it's about being able to communicate. Mm -hmm. So it's, there was the way that you used to communicate. Mm -hmm. If there's a better way, there's a better way. And so does that fall into that category? Or is there a, that real true benefit, mm -hmm. you know, to the brain? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where we can kind of look at our friends, you know, at the Center for Brain Health and some of the research that they're doing. And mm -hmm. so what does really benefit the brain? Yeah. And is it important that I know how seven times five equals 35, mm -hmm. or that I can just find out that it does. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, <laughs> let's talk about something that's not so serious, right? Like, um, when, did, uh, when did Toy Story 1 come out, the movie? Yeah, I have no idea. But <laughs> In the 90s, maybe, I yeah, guess? Uh -huh. Okay. But could you, could you tell me? I could find out real quick. Okay, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so in a situation where it's your job mm -hmm. to to have that answer, right? do you need to memorize it? Right. I would say no. I, I would say if I need to know that every day, uh -huh. well, ev every day, <laughs> yeah. that's part of my job and I gotta do it every day, then I can make a case for, okay, now it is slowing me down okay, to, yeah. to, to, to stop and go look every it time. up every time. Mm -hmm. If that is a part of my job once a month, uh, maybe it never is, uh, maybe it could be a lot, but maybe three months from now, well then, you know, let me have it when I need it. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I don't need to be carrying that around up here mm -hmm. if I'm not applying it on a regular basis. Because, yeah. um, you know, I mean, nowadays, is it really impressive to know things? I, I mean, I would say, I mean, not really, mm -hmm. right? I mean. Again, if you, it, I mean, even trivia games have become kind of boring sometimes because you know you just find out, you yeah. find out anything about it's anything. It's not so novel anymore, yeah, right? It's uh, not so impressive that like, oh wow, you you really know a bunch of stuff. You, you know, you know all the. But you're no different than me because I can still find out all that same stuff. Yeah, and and I guess I could also make the case of like, okay, it's slowing you down, right? Yeah. I can see how you know, okay, it so can be, yeah. You try you try to try to just you know have it there so you can quickly mm -hmm. bring it out, but you know. What's the limit to a human being being able to memorize all those things? Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe you have a team of people mm -hmm. having to like memorize these things. Mm -hmm. Whereas, to if you allow for somebody to acquire things, you eliminate a team, mm -hmm. and you have one person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I think is you, you you can make arguments. I think b both ways. And, yeah. and I'm not disagreeing with you or anything. I yeah. just, I can I can, can just kind of start thinking about you know the benefits of like. Okay, fine. 
take the extra seconds, but then where am I gaining something? Like I said, you know, maybe you're... Well, and then you, you don't have to do that every time, uh -huh. right? Because eventually there will come a point because of three repetition where you now have retained yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So it's not... Yeah, I mean, that's kind of silly. I'm not going to, if I have to know what your Toy Story was made every day, mm -hmm. I don't have to go look it up <laughs> five times. Eventually, I'm just going to know yeah, that yeah, yeah. because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. applying that, yeah. you know? Um, so, you know, maybe you get to, it's, it's how do you get to that point, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and, you know, I also give the example of the phone numbers. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I remember memorizing phone numbers at mm -hmm. one point. I still went through that. I mean, a lot of people tell me, you grew up with the internet, you never memorized phone. I did at one point still. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't now. Mm -hmm. And it has not slowed me down. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? It's like... No, I, you can do it faster. You probably do it faster, <laughs> you know? Um, you hit one button instead of seven. I mean, you, you don't even have to hit a button now. You can, I can just right, ask, you just tell it. I ask Siri to call. Yeah. Uh, this person and yep. they do it. You know, with that, it's this is funny because, I mean, you know, I, I have a one-year-old mm -hmm. and he's growing up with this technology. Mm -hmm. He's growing up with Alexa and, you know, a, a Google Dot. And I recently got a, a Google uh, Home uh, and I was setting it up. Yeah. And there I am kind of like speaking to it and setting it up and I put it next to a window and I'm actually using it for my other son, who mm -hmm. is just a month old. And, you know, we're putting just rain sounds for him to sleep and yeah. things like that. But my one-year-old sees me interact with this thing. And I'm, you know, I'm yelling at it. I'm talking to it, right? I'm mm -hmm. saying, hey, okay, Google, play this and play that. Uh, and he's in the phase where he's kind of like babbling things. And he's just kind of like, mama, mama, papa, blah, 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 yeah. blah. And I've seen him. He's playing something and he's walking. He runs up to the Google and goes, blah, 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 and walks mm -hmm. away. And I'm saying, like, you've seen this? Like, he knows that's how yeah. he interacted. Like, he's just talking to it. Yeah. And he's expecting something from it. he doesn't even it. really have language yet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. he's just, you know. Because that is the way it is. Yeah, yes. You know, yeah. it's, it's not a, oh, look how cool this is. It's like, this is, yeah. I'm growing up with this. Well, and it's like I told you uh, with Kate when she, uh, my five-year-old got in the car and our windshield had iced over. Mm -hmm. And... You know, so I had to wait a few minutes for the windshield to defrost. And she's like, Daddy, why aren't we going? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I can't see, <laughs> you know. I can't see because the windshield's iced over. And she's like, well, Siri knows how to get to school. <laughs> and so it's a very, I mean, that was so, she was serious, you know. And like in her mind, uh, why wouldn't Siri be able to drive our car to school? Mm -hmm. Why would I, why was I even necessary yeah. <laughs> in, in that equation, yeah. uh -huh. you know. So it isn't, and it's, it's interesting, there's a different take on that too. It's really actually, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking about this as we're sitting here talking, but you know, with Luke, my 10 year old who has autism, I think there's a much brighter outlook for him mm -hmm. and his life and his quality of life with all of this technology, right? Because he is gonna be limited in some of the cognitive things that he can do. Um, all of these things that sort of maybe seem like kind of gadgety or whatever for us that, mm -hmm. gosh, you don't even have to do this anymore. You just say it. Well, for him, that's gonna actually- Enable him. <laughs> enable him in, in a way that, you know, uh, yeah. he wouldn't otherwise, you know, be able to. So I think there's, you know, when you look at it from that perspective, there's a lot of promise um, that mm -hmm. goes with that. Um, as long as people will start to design those things, you know, with him in mind, as opposed to how could I just, you know, beat Apple or make the most money this quarter or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but, that's true. Yeah. You know, that's always an issue. But Yeah, and, and I guess that's, that's my argument towards some of these mm -hmm. way of teaching and way of learning things for like, my son is just kind of like freak out when I tell him, you know, please try to memorize these dates. And he's gonna say, I can ask for it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, another another thing that I notice he's, he's he's going through is, you know, we're watching YouTube videos and you know they're going through the songs, Wheels on the Buzz and Baby Shark, and there's one that he likes and he says, you know, more, more, mm -hmm. more in Spanish because I talked to him in Spanish. Mm -hmm. He says, mas, mas, which means he wants to hear it again. Mm -hmm. 
And I go, sure, sure, why not? Here, rewind. Play it again or whatever. And he's watching it again. It's a three-minute song. And he finishes and says, again, again. I said, sure, sure, here mm-hmm. you go. And I stopped and I thought, you know what? I didn't, I didn't have this. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, growing up, I have to wait for Saturday, wake up in the morning, watch the cartoon I wanted to. And it was a 20, 30-minute cartoon. And if yeah. it had a song in the middle and I liked it, I saw it and that was it. Yeah. It was gone. I couldn't say again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might get really excited the next time that came on, or if yeah. you saw it like weeks later, it's like, oh, I remember this one. Yes. It's going to be awesome. And it was, I was at the mercy of whenever yeah. it was going to yeah, yeah, happen yeah. again. Yeah. Maybe VHS allowed me for maybe do that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's funny because it got to a point where he loved the intro of a song he liked. Mm. And it was about five seconds long. Mm-hmm. And I would try to play the song for him, and the five seconds would come in, and it was something, they were just going, go, 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 mm-hmm. go, go. And he loves that, he kind of jumps and he does mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And as soon as that's over and they start the song, <clears throat> he turns and looks at me and says, no, 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 play it again, right? Mm-hmm. More, 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 more. Yeah. And he wants those five seconds over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and again, I mean, he lives in a world where that's possible. And I even heard somebody say, you know, back in the day when you would hear Mozart, you know, you were living with Motor, mm-hmm. and you were able to listen to one of his songs, if you will. You heard it once in your lifetime. Right. And if you liked right. that song, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. You know, and so relatively, that's such a short time for humans to mm-hmm. kind of evolve that, that quickly. Yeah, but we're at a point where, like, he wants that now. Mm-hmm. And that's possible. Mm-hmm. There you go. Get yeah. it. Um, you know, how, wh- 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 what's in the future? I mean, would he be able to like, <laughs> would he be able to download right. knowledge for him? And yeah, that sounds like that's a movie. But is it that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it certainly is. But yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> we're already, you know, coding babies, right? So <laughs> how far off? Yeah. You know, is that? But I think, um, so how does that kind of tie back to... I meant to reality. You <laughs> know, oh, is that where we started? <laughs> 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 I guess it's, and I know you say this, right? I guess it's, it's for me, it, it too, it's like, okay, if it, if, it, if it does make what you're doing better, mm-hmm. or um, like you often say, it's, you know, a machine doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be better than a human. Mm-hmm. We have to be, you know, we just can't get caught up in like good old day syndrome just because mm-hmm. it's like, well, this is not how I, I'm such a much better person because I had to do it the hard way. I don't, I mean, are you really? Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe if all these other things are that much easier, then how can you use that extra time and energy and brain power to apply it to something else? And maybe that's the big question is you don't, how do we keep them from being just a zombie that doesn't have to do anything yeah. because it's all done for them? And then they just become catatonic and because they, they don't <laughs> actually use it, you know, their brain for anything else. What takes the place of that? Mm-hmm. And, and how do they, uh, and that kind of goes back to what are the new skills, mm-hmm. you know, that are required in that kind of world. Well, let's talk a little bit about, you know, I mean, we're talking about the skills that we are going to, for lack of a better term, are going to teach someone mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. But what are the skills that we are going to need? Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I think I am predicting is that, you know, people like me, the video editors and the graphic designers um, are going to be, uh, I want to be careful here, I don't want to say less valuable, mm-hmm. but you as a non-graphic designer mm-hmm. won't have the need for me as much as you do now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, thanks to machine. And mm-hmm. what I mean by that is, maybe you put some information on your PowerPoint, and you know you're not gonna make it look good. Mm-hmm. You know you don't have that. And PowerPoint will make it look good for you. So PowerPoint it's already doing that. It's right? already doing that yep. for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, to me, at, at one point it, it should have been scary as a graphic designer, mm-hmm. as a video editor, uh, but not anymore, and because. What I've seen happen is you have the, the experienced video editors, the experienced graphic designers. Um, now, 
given the opportunity to to then come in in this world and say why does this work mm -hmm. um, and we go back to w the brain and, yeah. and what is what is uh, what is the yeah. brain uh, reacting to and so when it comes to like okay you can now make a video mm -hmm. without the, the need for a video guy right right you can you can make a motion graphic animation mm -hmm. using something like Vion or yeah. something like that um, but then the question is what type of video is needed right <coughs> because if it, yeah. you can do it that's fine yeah but i can come in and tell you or you know it could be a mutual thing we now the the commodity is going to be okay but i can tell you that the type of video you need is something lighthearted, a comedy mm -hmm. uh something short yeah uh something with story driven and something more concrete and, and yeah. then here's how you actually make that happen right uh -huh. or here's how you construct it in such a way that it generates that result not just the actual physical yes you know uh -huh. part of that we were talking the other day about um, gamification and, and that's a buzzword right mm -hmm. and um, how um, you know what really is underneath those things what when you design a game and, and what are those things that you're not seeing that are very deliberately yeah. mm -hmm. put in there from a psychological perspective and put in there at very specific points in time so that if you just say, okay, I'm gonna gamify this, and I know that that means badges, and that means mm -hmm. points and stuff like that, and I just go slap it on there. Yeah. Without any real sense of, I understand the underlying principle of the what a badge does <laughs> and the chemical reaction of a brain to that, mm -hmm. and when it's appropriate yes. to do that, uh, or optimal to, to have that incentive relative to another uh, element that I've put in there. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it work. Yeah, <coughs> I guess right? yeah, I guess the story would be, you know, I know how to code a badge mm -hmm. inside this program, and therefore you need me. Well, now there's programs out there that allow you to press a button, and now you have yes, the ability to make your content badges. is gamified. Yes, right? uh -huh. you know. boom. So now again. You may say, well, I don't need Jeremy to come in and code the badges. I can do it on this program. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think the level playing field is going to, it's going to, you know, wait, that's the wrong thing. I think the, the playing field is going to yeah. be leveled up a little bit. But then the question is, where do you put a badge? Yeah. Right? And you then we can kind of say, okay, this is how the brain works. Mm -hmm. And we can say, at this point, you know, I've quizzed them a lot. Mm -hmm. And at this point, they need to have proven a lot of, uh, retention or the proof that they've learned some mm -hmm. and I can kind of start predicting that maybe here they kind of start feeling some frustration so mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is give them that badge yeah. um, and it's really not for them it's for the brain mm -hmm. you know for mm -hmm. the brain to feel a sense of completion a sense of I've done I've, I've done something uh, the puzzle is solved and there is the dopamine hit right and therefore I know that okay now I can start a different topic or something and that's going to become more important than just do you know how to put badges do you know how to animate yeah. the, well, the like, little trophy going uh, cring? <laughs> yeah, the, let's take you know you compare two end results uh -huh. right which is the end of the game or the end of a course and learner a and learner b and they both at the end of that they both have 10 badges mm -hmm. right so if you just look at the end state you say okay that's the same mm -hmm. right but in learner A's case, I didn't l find out that I got all those badges until I was done. So I was <laughs> like, oh, go, do all the way through it, then I'm done. And now, oh, by, you, by the way, you yeah. got 10 badges. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, cool. <laughs> As opposed to, you know, that deliberate spacing to your point as I earned them throughout. Mm -hmm. Again, same end state. Yeah. But completely different result mm -hmm. in terms of how you're getting there and what you're actually accomplishing yeah. with that. And that's the important part. Yeah, maybe I want to give them a little mm -hmm. bit of song cost and, you know, I gave them two badges. But look, you got five to go mm -hmm. and then you got three more and your brain is thinking, okay, I've spent some right. time here. I should just do it. That's what's going to be important. And that's the principle that's yes. underlying all uh -huh. of that. Yeah. So to your point, what skills do we need? Yeah. I, I think we do. We, we have to be... Uh, we would be wise to get smarter about um, neuroscience and how the brain works. 
so that we can leverage all of these great tools and technologies that are going to make our lives easier and allow us to produce better content and all of that. For what? You know, that's if, if, if you don't really understand how to apply those yeah. things in an optimal way, you're just kind of creating trash. Um, and your learners will know that and they will find whatever they feel like they need somewhere else. Yeah, no, uh. and that's, that's another thing too that, I mean, uh, we've been seeing how, you know, just YouTube came, mm -hmm. came and just, I guess, made that mindset of, you know, knowledge acquisition a lot more feasible mm -hmm. and more appetizing. And you can find somebody out there with an opinion or a video <laughs> on how to do just about anything. anything <laughs> yes. And you can find it really easily. Uh -huh. So, you know, as we've talked about, you, if you're in L&D department, that's your competition. Mm -hmm. You're competing with other sources of knowledge. And if you have, you know, and, and maybe in some cases that's not bad. Fine, if they can find it on YouTube and be successful at it, then why should I spend my time in <laughs> developing a solution? Yeah. But if, there is a, if there's a situation where it is really important that they do it your way, mm -hmm. Uh, you now have a, you know, you're competing with alternative yeah. solutions. Um, and so you have to look at those other aspects of, uh, you know, how you're marketing that and how the brain will respond to that to make sure that your solution is the preferred yeah. uh, solution. You've also been kind of exploring a little bit of how marketing mm -hmm. works yeah. with... Is it the brain? Is it is it psychology. is it people? Is it psychology? Psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. Um, and you kind of uh, fell into something that you, you really like, and you mm -hmm. feel like the learning community can really adopt. Yeah. And you've been kind of working on adapting that. Yeah. So that uh, the language is more for. Uh, our world, mm -hmm. right? Um, tell, me, uh, tell me a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, so it's uh, the, the notion of, you know, in commerce, trying to remove friction from, mm -hmm. uh, between your consumer and your product. You know, you're making it as easy as possible for them to uh, buy your product, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so I, I'd seen some, some discussions around that and kind of identifying points of friction in, uh -huh. that, in that process. And almost everything that I saw, I, in some way, I could translate to, you know, well, that applies to learning, a learning solution as well, if you just kind of make this little adjustment here, mm -hmm. or, you know, change the word learner to consumer or vice versa. Yeah. Um, and it really kind of started opening my eyes to, you know, opportunities that potentially we're missing uh, when we do create a, a learning solution. So, you know, all the way from the uh, ability to recognize that there's even a solution available to me and a trigger that might uh, remind me of that or point me to the support that I have, to my motivation, again, like we were just talking about, to choose X solution over Y mm -hmm. solution, which might be your video versus a video that I find on YouTube. Uh, to the uh, ability to access it, mm -hmm. right, and to make it as easy as possible to find it. Can I get to it in, in a couple of clicks, or do I have to go through, you know, three sign-ons and 15 <laughs> pages, and how demotivating that is, mm -hmm. and how I'll probably just not even do it. Um, and then the ability to kind of use analytics around how the learner is actually going through that process to be able to refine and redeploy that solution in an even better way. And so, so marketing is using all of those techniques on us all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's in, with the intent to say, I want you to pick my product. Yeah. So, so really the idea is <clears throat> if we can create these awesome solutions, and I think we here at Infinity, we do, mm -hmm. you know, um, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. And so if nobody knows about it, mm -hmm. it doesn't have any value. If they're not motivated to choose that uh, as opposed to another source of information, it adds no value. If they can't get to it, it has no value. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm still just making was, you know, an educated guess about what's going to be effective, but if I don't have that data <laughs> yeah. to tell me what it, whether it was or wasn't effective or 
the medium that was used was more popular than, a, than another approach, then I'm still sort of just guessing and I might be wrong mm -hmm. and therefore it has no value. So really looking at all of those areas, um, just like we were creating a product and taking it to market. Yeah. Um, and if we start doing that, could we really increase our, our value and effectiveness? What do you call that? I mean, for lack of a better term, we call it frictionless learning. Or how do you, you know, you, how do you remove friction in your, in your learning solutions? And frictionless may be an absolute that's not reasonable, mm -hmm. but at a minimum, it is. Um, how do you minimize that friction yeah. as, as much as possible? And are you even looking at those areas? Because that means things like you need artists and UX designers mm -hmm. and people who have data analysis skills yeah. on your L&D teams to execute that as opposed to just a bunch of project managers and instructional designers. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to look beyond an LMS to give you the data that you need to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you need to budget for a marketing campaign. Yeah. You know, the budget can't be 100% allocated to the development and deployment of the solution. You need to look at that budget and say, now how am I going to roll this out? Not roll this out in the traditional sense of, well, I'm going to have a train the trainer session and then I'm going to implement <laughs> yeah. this. But how am I going to create a campaign that raises awareness and gets it in people's face and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, hopefully embeds it into their workflow? And that's got to be part of the project and, and part of the budget. Yeah. Too.